the unsung hero right here, fans. Yes, they give you RGB, they light your case, they make things look pretty, but they move air. They move air so that the components inside your system are cool and therefore can give you the best performance. Taking a look today at the fans that you have as options, what you need to look for, and some recommendations on sizing and some other things. This is Project 7 Series, a long form look at how you can build your own gaming system here in 2021. If you like content like this, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, maybe even consider subscribing. So the first thing that you need to think about is 120 millimeters versus 140 millimeters. Now, most PC cases are designed with 120 in mind. Some of them will give you the option to increase the size to 140. What are the key differences? Well, 120 is going to move a more forceful volume of air. In order to move the same volume of air, though, as the 140, it requires faster rotation of the fan. A 140 isn't going to be quite as forceful of a fan, but it will move a greater volume, and it will do so at a lower RPM. Higher RPM will lead to more noise. Lower RPM will lead to less noise. You absolutely have to have PWM controls. That There should not be a fan on the market anymore that doesn't have this. Pulse width modulation allows you to control the RPM, the speed of the fan, independently of any algorithm or any tuning. In fact, most motherboards today allow you to dial in the exact temperature and fan curve that you want so that you can just take care of this on your own. Set it once and pretty much forget it going forward. PWM is a four pin design. There's four pins on the header. There's four wires on the fan itself. Absolutely, you should get a PWM controlled fan. Lastly, some fans even have silent mode. Now, silent mode is okay for things like the GPU. Silent mode is also okay for certain fans in certain places on your system, but never use a silent mode for your front intake fans or for your CPU fans. The air needs to continuously move in those areas, so don't, don't get a silent mode for those. Now, there are several different types of bearings that all do somewhat of a similar job. A ball bearing is kind of the mid tier, if you will. It is a solid ball. It is designed to withstand a long, long period of use, and it is often used in servers and in the bigger kind of machinery that is out there. A sleeved bearing is a bearing that has been sleeved essentially it is not as good as a pure ball bearing it is not as good as the other ones that are on this list but it is common to see sleeved bearings in fans that might be included in a pc case it is common to see it in the very lower tier fans that you might get around on the internet if you see it as a sleeved bearing just just avoid it. Uh, we, don't, we don't really want those. Sleeve bearings also don't perform as well in certain orientations. They have a tendency to wear down a little bit faster if you have it horizontal versus if you have it vertical. And if you think of how PC cases are built, a lot of them have horizontal on the top, potentially even on the bottom. Fluid dynamic bearing is a kind of a sleeved bearing, but it is significantly improved. Fluid dynamic bearings can be found all over the place. Most, if not all, of your higher-end fans are going to be using that exact type. Lastly, you have maglev. This stands for magnetic levitation. These are the most expensive fans on the market because they use magnets to raise the fan off of the motor and allow it to spin independently. The two items don't ever touch. So therefore, you never never are going to have any friction, noise, and these are probably going to last you significantly longer than any of the fan ever in your life. But at the same time, they come at a very high price. And not too many choices out there, especially the kind that have RGB. Kind of disappointed in that part. So now that we have the type of bearings that are going inside the fan, now that we have the sizing down, let's talk about another pretty important concept as it pertains to fans and their job moving air. Static pressure versus airspeed versus air volume. 
Now you're gonna frequently see two measurements. You're gonna see a measurement that talks about H2O, that is water. You're gonna see cubic feet per minute, or you're gonna see cubic meters per hour. Both of those are the conversions. Either one of them is fine. You can convert them back and forth. It's a relatively easy equation, but they mean different things. So the static pressure measurement is how forceful the air is. And this is very important if you are using radiators or if you are, have a crowded case, like a small form factor, ultra small form factor, that kind of a case. The volume of air, the cubic, is how much air will move through the fan into your chassis in either minutes or in hours, depending on which notation you use. Air volume is important because we want to make sure that we are maintaining an internal pressure so that there's more fresh air coming in than there is air going out. And therefore, the air that is going out is going to not just go through the exhaust fan, it's going to go through the cracks and the crevices. That's how you can keep your case cleaner. The clean air is going to go from the intake through a mesh filter and then into your case and then exhaust out in any direction that it possibly can. That's why the volume of air is important. Now, air speed is another indicator, and that is simply how much air is moving in a given period of time over a general kind of an area. Air speed is more or less not as important as static pressure or air volume. That's where we're going to focus and that's what we're going to pay the most attention to. You can do some back of the napkin calculations with an airspeed indicator to figure out some of those other numbers, but ultimately we're kind of stuck relying on the manufacturers and their best guess and their best marketing sniff tests in order to understand these values. Everybody does it slightly different. There's different calculations. There's different testing methodologies. Just know that these are rough ballpark figures. You'll never know exactly what these numbers are going to mean for your fans in your case. Here are my recommendations for fans. And you can see right here, these are those two numbers I was just talking about. So this is air volume and this is the static pressure. The first number up here obviously is price. We have the sound. Now the way that a sound measurement works, it's not linear, meaning it basically follows a standard curve, like a straight line. It's log logarithmic. Wow, that's hard to say. Which means for each unit up, you are effectively nearly doubling. I think it's every two decibels is double the volume of the previous one. So if you go from 28 to 30, that is twice as loud, essentially. The 30 is over the 28. And then down at the bottom, you can see the kinds of bearings. Now, two of the three of these are labeled as fluid dynamic bearings. That means you're going to have high pressure fluid that is being driven around the bearing, and that's going to give you very good longer lasting overall performance. And then the Noctura uses their own methodology, which is another high pressure variant, but their special term for it is self-stabilizing oil pressure, which is just a refined version of a sleeve bearing, just like the fluid dynamic bearings are. The Lee and Lee has a very nice RGB element. It is front and back. You get a good side element. I love the way it looks in my Lee and Lee 011 dynamic. It is pricier. Leanly also has a daisy chain capability where you are able to link these fans together in order to run them off of the same power header, the same fan header, the same RGB headers. The controller unit also allows you to have four independent zones. So if you aren't daisy chaining them, instead you're using the cables, you can have four zones as well. So I really like the Lian Li from an overall standpoint. By the way, I forgot to mention, these are 140 millimeter fans. You can get these in their 120 variety. I do recommend the 140s kind of overall. Even for radiators, you can see these numbers are very high still in terms of their force. They're able to push a good amount of water, which is exactly what you need also for radiators. The Noctura is 
the most common, the most popular fan type that is out there. You can see this is the black Chroma Max version. You do have a variety of colors that you can change these soft rubberized vibration dampeners. $25 per fan, very, very low decibel rating. It is a very quiet fan. It moves a heck of a lot of volume and it doesn't give up the power either. So very good fan if you are looking for case fans. Be quiet. I really like these silent wings too. I used these on my Dark Rock Pro 4. I felt they performed very, very well. Not as much volume as the Noctora, but it does have more power being able to push at the expense of more noise. One last item that I want to point out here. When it comes to cases, you're going to probably be in a situation where a manufacturer wants to provide you with their fans as part of the case. Always look and see if those case fans actually are worth it. In the instance of Project 7, I did like the Fantex XK 140s that were in there. I picked up an additional one in order to install as an exhaust fan. I'm happy so far with what I'm seeing and what I have read on those fans, but you want to make sure that you are getting the best bang for the buck when it comes to those case fans. I do think that these Fantex are going to be very, very good and they are well rated as well. Now that you know the kind of fans that you should be looking at and how to interpret the information, let's go ahead and show you how easy it is to mount an additional fan in Project 7.